the series and she's going to bring something. And uh, we're going to send her that word for a few moments. And we don't know God's going to speak to us. Amen. Amen. Let's do this. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God, family. Praise God. Praise God. Um, praise God. This is my first time preaching from, from here. It's just so good. To, it's one of those times where you can... Amen. Yeah? The faithfulness of God, right? Like, you can just sort of think, like, it's one of those times you just think, gosh, like... God is just so, 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 so faithful. Like, I don't know in an environment like this, people have different walks and different stages and different, you know. But if you don't know this God that I, I speak of, like, I tell you, he is good and he is faithful. And with little, he does so much. You don't have to have much to give, you know, like, and just honor, you've got to honor Pastor G and Pastor Salone, you know, you've got to, like, come on, guys. You've got to because it's, it isn't easy. It isn't easy. So, you know, you know, love you guys. Muchos. Um, praise God. So in my in my sleep, right, I was dreaming. I didn't have one of those, you know, when you're just tired, you don't have one of those good sleeps because you feel like you've got to get up, that your alarm's going to go off. So you always think it's like early, like you're ready to get. So anyway, I didn't sleep up. But um, in my sleep, this, this, this hymn came to me. And because I'm a little bit weird, I, sometimes I think that God's like putting, sometimes, especially when I'm worship, I feel like he puts in a request. Like, you know, like you would like the DJ or Spotify or whatever, like he puts on something that he wants to hear. Um, and the song is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And it's not something I would, it's not something I listen to frequently. I can say, I can convince I sang it in the last month, but I do not remember singing this song for years. So I even had, so when I woke up, the first thing I did was go to YouTube and just type in the thing just to, to hear it. And I don't know why God wants us to sing. You may not even know it, but praise God, Chloe does. But I just want you to get the words of, it's good to trust him. Like, it's good to hold him at his word. Like, it's you don't have to hold at man's word because man can flop and so you know I can see why you may be tired by that because they flopped and so but it's good to rest in Jesus and so I'm going to be obedient I believe that Jehovah wants this song from this house today and so we're going to oh, you know you know me I could try but yeah we'll, we'll let I don't want people to mute the mic we'll let, we'll let um, we'll let you don't, don't, don't tell me God because I've got it in me it's deep down you know deep 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 down Praise God. Um, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Amen. And just as they're singing this, just I, just I just say to someone here today to say, you know, if you don't know, just say, God, show me how to trust you. Teach me how to trust you. I don't know. I want to. But can you just, can you show me? Can you teach me how to trust you? Amen. Trust in Jesus just to take him as his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the
Jehovah, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star, beside you there is no other. There is no other. There isn't anything good outside of you. Father God, I pray that with the God of the universe, would you speak through me? Is, could, you, could, could there be absolutely none of me today, Lord God? Putting aside every opinion, my own preconceived ideas, what's vexed me in the week or irritated me, let's put all of that before you, Lord God, that you, Jehovah, great almighty God would speak to your children here today so that actually we don't just have an encounter with the preacher girl but instead they have an encounter with the king and everything changes for your glory for your glory for your glory that your kingdom will come in this earth in this culture and from this house in this time that we will be the one. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Come and clap for Jesus, not me really. Yeah. Amen. He is really very good. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You guys can, can take a seat. You guys know that like, this is home, so not that I'm going to slack or anything, but like, you know, it's just good. It takes a bit of the, the load off. And um, Pastor G gave me an assignment. Have you guys enjoying the culture series? Amen. But this is week four. I think it's week four. And yeah, it's good. I think culture is one of those things. Everyone loves, um, everyone loves, you know, your, your time is now. The storm is over. Even R. Kelly. Y you know, everyone wants those sorts of is it too soon? You know, you, is it too soon? Sorry, you know what I'm like. Um, everyone loves those things, but, you know, the things that actually genuinely change our world happen very deeply and they're from the inside out. And sometimes those sorts of conversations need to be had. Um, and so I believe that's what the culture series is about. And I've been given the assignment of preaching on a topic called from counterculture. Counterculture. Um, how are you guys doing? You all right, though? Yeah, praise God, man. Pray for me. Joshua started nursery. Um, you can pray for Joshua. Pray for me. Because, <laughs> let's show. I'm just like, yeah, it's real. You just, just give my baby just over like that. Yeah, just pray for me. So that's what's happening in my world. And each time I do it, I'm like, you don't want to, you know, you, my friend said you should um, buy the teacher's apples, you know, or treats or just like, you know, packages from ASOS, like check their size and just little bribes so they treat your child a little better but you know I believe in the blood of Jesus you know so I'm just like blood of Jesus yeah. but pray for me because I walk away like oh, blood of Jesus blood of Jesus and I said to God I said you know counterculture how are we going to do this how are we going to unpack this and sometimes when I share a word God just gives me bits you know as I go about my day conversation I may have it's Rev birthday today by the way shout out Rev um I could be having a conversation with him and then Anyone, really, here. And it's just, God speaks to me. And I think, oh, that's for counterculture. So I pull it, you know, in my little thing. And I go back when I... And so with this happening, I just felt like, oh, God, you haven't joined the dots like you used to. Like, so I'm a bit like, this is... And God said to me, do you remember the cassettes? You might not, because... Yeah, I don't know. If you, if you, if you don't remember, just, pre just nod. <laughs> cassettes back in the day, like, before, like, you know... T t yeah, I'm not even... Exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm not even that old, but... Well, I, but I know about cassettes. Um, but, so they used to have side A, side B. Yeah, you, you know, you used to get your side A, just to squeeze everything you own. And all right, you, when it's finished, you're like, oh, got to get up, change it to side B. You know, and that's how the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And he was just saying, there's a side A and there's a side B to this sermon of counterculture. He said, because there's two sets of people in the house and we need to join it together. So the first sets of people are people that actually they don't even encounter, they haven't truly encountered the king. And listen, let me tell you, this is not about, this is not pre-educated on how long you've been in church. Amen. You can be in church your whole life and not know the father. You, you, you know, and, and we don't, we haven't actually got to know him as, as Lord. We haven't let some things go. So we're just going to go, that's, this is part A. We're going to go to Mark chapter five. And it's just, 
it's really a short verse, but it's just, I need to, to lay this down before we start talking about counterculture. Because the reason we become culture is because we've never actually left culture. Because you can't get the kingdom culture if you don't know the king of the kingdom. You know, and I feel like in this house, we need to teach about the king and the kingdom. Because if we don't teach about the king and the kingdom, then it just becomes um, something that you are taught to do. As, a, as opposed to something that becomes you. Amen. If it becomes you, it flows from you. It flows from you. It flows from you. You can say hello. You can be in prep. You can be wherever you are. And just how you say hello, there's something a little bit peculiar. He said that we are a royal priesthood. A peculiar. We've been pulled out of darkness into marvelous light. But that sounds beautiful. But it could be life-changing if you get it. The Holy Spirit will do it today in the name of Jesus. You know, in this, I'll give you the little backdrop before I do so you know what happens, because you know what it's like when you walk into a film midway. You just don't know what's going on. Here, there's a, this, there was a man who was demon-possessed. Um, but you can swap demon-possessed here today with anything. You know, had a problem with gossiping, had a problem with spending, you know, self-harm, self-hurt, you know, low self-esteem, low confidence, ego, pride, you name it. We're in a fallen world. Any other sin, they had it. And Jesus came. And he basically set him free, in a, in a nutshell, just as he does. This was a man who actually the whole, he cast out the demons very dramatically, put them into the pigs, and the pigs literally just ju- yeah, jumped off into the, into the um, what was it, ocean sea. What, yeah, it was very dramatic. But anyway, this man who once was cutting himself, he was in a dark, dark, dark place. I know that some of you in here, I know you look cute. But you've come in here and you're in, you're in a dark place. And I can't, I wouldn't even be doing the king any service if I started talking about counterculture when you're still the man in that dark place. You still don't feel like a man. You still don't feel like a woman. You still, you still look in the mirror with utter disgust. And you know the words of every song. But something's amiss. Something's amiss. You're like, gosh, am I all right? Because I'm constantly sad. This man, they, they would, they would buy, put him together, bind him up because he was so aggressive with his thing. And he would just, nothing can contain him. Because when you hurt deep, just me. No, just me. I know it's not just me because sometimes I look at some of you here and I'm like, gosh, if I had enough time. Your, your eyes are sad. You know, you can see it. And, and Jesus, in, in a way that only Jesus could, just freed him. Freed him. And I think for some people here today, that's what you need to encounter. The freedom from the king, I do not have it. Well, well that's part B, I don't want to jump. <laughs> you know, I don't, I, I don't have it to give to you. But I can tell you that Jesus saves. He is a redeemer. He restores I know it to be true. If you encounter him, you leave differently. So as, because you know, Jesus had, he was on a tight schedule. He was booked, you know, you know, really booked. You know, not like these people today. It's one of the, one of the things in culture that we need to counter. Everyone's busy. You, if you're not busy, it's, it's like you're not important because we've taken our, our validation out of being booked. So it's like, if you're not, If you don't have anything to do, then it's like, I am not anything. But Jesus says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's one of the first countercultures. If you look on Instagram, everyone needs to be doing something. Everyone needs to be doing something. Because if you're not doing something, then it's like, well, does nobody like you? You, I I see, I was saying to some of the guys, I think I was saying to Adele a few weeks ago, I said, it's a new trend now where people even read the Bible and say, and, and then put study time. Really? I'm confused because you're, you're studying, but you're, you're posted. Oh, wow. You want everyone to know that you're studying because now we're in a culture, even Christians have ad- adopted that culture where it's like, gosh, you have to see me studying. But actually, if you have truly been free, it will flow from you. You don't need to post it. No one needs to know it. You just need to be saying, hi, can I get a latte? You look different. So this, this man, anyway, so after Jesus had done it, he got on his way. He was really booked. Jesus was really booked. 
He had three years, you know, he was like, gosh, I've got the world to save. Do you know what I mean? I love you. You're important to me. I need to go on to do the next person. So he got, in the disi- he got in the boat with his disciples to go into his next assignment. And this man was like, no, 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 don't leave me. Don't leave. Let me read it because the Bible says it about 18. It says, and when he got into the boat, he who had been demon possessed. You know, it's a word for someone here today. Been. Past tense. You are no longer there. It is a lie from the pits of hell that they keep putting the finger on repeat that you haven't been saved. You haven't been set free. You can have, you can see, you can feel anxious. It doesn't mean you suffer from anxiety. Let me tell you, they're two different things and I don't have time to proper go into the depths of it. Because the eternal thing that has been done on the cross, he said, it is finished. That was before we were ev- ever even created. That was before we ever even felt anxious. And it had already been completed, been demon-possessed. Does that mean that this man never went on to have bad days? Of course he did. Of course he went on to have bad days. But he never would claim again, I'm demon-possessed. Oppressed. Some of us have some oppression. Let's be honest. Some of us have some oppression. I mean, well, let me just be real for me. on this. I definitely wake up someday and I'm like, gosh, what's going on, Tobes? But I would open my mouth and say, I'm demon-possessed when the king of kings lives in me. Never. Never. How, how is the Holy Spirit going to reside in the same body and functions of something that is a demonic force? It doesn't make sense. If there's light, there's light. It says that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. They both can't be in the same place. But you can, with the oppression, you can say flee. But what happens in culture is we think we've, to, we've created in culture that what happens to us defines us. Do you understand? So now, even in the church, everywhere, it's the world that's done it, and this is counter. We need to counter that by the word of God. The counter. Let me just break this down for you. Counter culture is kingdom culture. It is biblical world through you. There's so many I'll say today, but really, the counter to the culture that is out there is what you're finding in scripture. When you open it and eat it, and you don't have time to Instagram it, you will become it. So, so, when, so when, when you see people outside and it's like, what's happened to them becomes them, you can say, well, this has happened to me, but it is not me. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Every single one of us have some sort of issue. Every one of us. But we are children of God. What happens to us never changes who we are. That's Satan. He wants to tell you who you are. He wants to try and put an identity on you. Been demon possessed. Been, been, no longer. No longer. I don't know who that is. You need to sit there in your seat right now and claim it for yourself. Been, do you know, been anxious. Been whatever it is. Been afraid. But I am a child of God. It says, begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him and said, and said to him, go to your friends and tell them the great things that the Lord has done for you and, he has, and how he has had compassion on you. Verse 20. And he departed and began to proclaim in De- was it Decapolis, yeah, and all that, Jesus, all that Jesus had done for them and they marveled. You know, isn't that funny? So he was like, gosh, my world was so dark. Without you, I'll go back. You know, I don't know about you, but I've been like that. I'm like, Jesus, take me with you. Jesus, take me with you. I can't do this alone. I can't raise Joshua alone. I can't be a decent wife to Akin alone. I can't be a godly sister. I can't lead these people alone. I can't. I don't know. what. I don't know. It's just me. Take me with you, God. Take me with you, God. You know, that's sort of like, gosh, I know that without you, I'll just, I'll slip back. And some of us here, you know, we're talking about bringing people in. And some of you are like, oh, gosh, I just need Jesus. I'm just trying to hold on, like, with everything to Jesus. I'm, if, I, I'm, you're just thinking, boy, drug addicts, they've got their own. It's me, I've got my own. I'm trying to hold on to Jesus. So I'm, I can relate to that man. Take me with you, God. But what was so funny was, I was like, oh, God, Jesus was like, no, 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 you've got to stay here. I thought, oh, that's harsh. Stay where he was cutting himself. There might have been fresh blood on the side. You go back, you don't stay in church, you go back to your issues. You go back to where, you go back to that estate you came from. 
He's sending you back there. You see, this is the thing with church. We, we become Christians and then all of a sudden we become elite. You know, I, I tell you a story. It's funny. I was, uh, I was in central London having some friends with, um, um, dinner with my friends. I call them yah yah friends because they're like, yah, 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 yah. <laughs> really lovely people though, but that's just how. That's, I mean, they, it's not even they watch it and they'll be like, so, like I'm like my yah yah friends. Everything's like, yah, yah, yah. Sabah? Sabah? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, that's how they talk. Anyway, so I was coming out and I saw some of my friends from Road. I haven't seen them in years though. And not even, it's honest, I haven't. And they kept like, wow, Toby though. Is that you, though? And I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is just not, you know, my friend was like, oh, over here, I'm, I was like, sorry? What? You know, you just like, just keep walking towards Chantry Lane Station, and then maybe perhaps once we get there. And um, he was like, no, nah, seriously, like, what are you doing these ends, though? And I was just like, yeah, how are you? How's things? How? <laughs> you know, let's just wrap this baby up, because we need to just get on. And then when I got on the train, the Holy Spirit convicted me like, so what? I cleaned you up when you were bi- not too long ago. You still have been. You still have been, but you feel now that you, you, got, you can't speak to people. He said, stay with, stay where you were. Stay where you are, rather. Stay exactly where you are. And he said, you know why Jesus was able to do that? Because Jesus is no longer outside of us. He is now in us. And let me tell you, if you get that, then you're, it will change your world. Because some of you hang on to Jesus like he's an external force. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, and with that external force, it means that you have to do certain things in order to hold on to that external force. God, take me with you. Take me with you. I'll pray more times. I'll use the rosary beads. I'll do whatever. I'll join the worship team. Just take me with you. And Jesus is like, listen, I am in you. I am in you. Now I need you to become the, 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 the feet of Jesus. There is nothing good outside of God. There, is, there isn't anything good outside of God. Love. Love doesn't exist outside of God. The justice that they speak about, it doesn't exist outside of God. Mercy doesn't exist outside of God. Grace doesn't exist outside of God. Redemption doesn't exist outside of God. There isn't anything good outside of God. In fact, the scripture says it perfectly. He says, every good and perfect thing comes from me. Everything. And that God resides within you. He will do anything. So Joshua, as I said, started nursery. It's a lot, guys. Seriously, man. I'm serious. I'm, I'm a bit of a crybaby anyway, but this is a lot. And I'm punch, like, what's the word? Punctuality isn't my um, strongest, but I'm a child of God. <laughs> but I'm trying, y'all. Um, and so I said to Akin, I said, I think, do you know what's going to cure me? Because every Sunday, Akin's got to be here. Like, if Akin's late, just know, just pray for me. Basically, Akin will be in the car like, I'm starting this engine. And I'm like, I'm coming, Joshua, I'm coming. But I said to Akin, do you know what's going to cure me? I said, Josh starting nursery. He said, why? I said, do you know why? Because I've got a picture of like all the mums picking up their babies and Joshua standing there like, is my mum coming for me? (laughs) And I said, that picture just, it changed my world. Because I was like, no, I've got... And so when the first time I took Josh to nursery, I said to him, you know, you, you know, you do, what do they call it? Settling in. But I had a meeting, so my own settling in was very, very, I was like, baby, you got to get this. So I sat down with him. We, we played with some bricks. And I said, Josh, mommy's coming back for you. Like, like legit, honestly, I wouldn't leave you here. That's how I talked to Joshua. Like, obviously, I'm going to come back for you. I said, so say bye-bye to mommy. And he looked at me like. <laughs> and then he was like, bye-bye. I said, okay. And he didn't cry. And then I, I did that for like f- maybe three weeks. And then one day I was like ready and he was like, bye bye. And he just walked in. And God said to me, because he knows you come back. Yeah. How many times has God come back for you? Let's be honest. How many times has he come back? The reason this is still part A. How, how many times you're sitting here in your right mind? sit down and think about what you've been through and then think gosh then you'll know that peace surpasses all understanding then you'll know that a sound mind comes from God 
And you think every single time, you know, he, he's come back from you time and time and time again. And he's within you. Now it's time for you to go out. I'm edging us towards part B. Before I do that, there was one particular day where, I, you know, as I said, I've been good with this. So I left, I got in the car, and I came out on my road, and it was chock-a-block. Like, you couldn't even, you couldn't move. It was chock-a-block. And I looked at the time, I said, gosh, half an hour. Though it's like a 10-minute drive, I still had half an hour. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll get him on time. But before I knew, it was five, to the time, five minutes before the time, and I'd only really moved up the road. And I said, I called Akin, Akin's at work, and I was like, I think I'm going to have a panic attack. Like, I can't get to him. You know, I can't get... The, the thought of not being able... I can't go anywhere. Anyway, I drove like a... I'm sure tickets come in, let's be honest. You know, let's just, let's just accept it. I drove like... And then I parked the car somewhere and I ran. And I just... And you, anyone that knows me well, she don't do that. <laughs> you know, like, running isn't my strongest suit. Like, I've got a Fitbit, I'm trying. Um... But I ran, I ran, when I got, you know, dripping with sweat. And again, the Holy Spirit spoke to me again. And he said, that's nothing for what I came for you. Because I crossed into time. I crossed into time. And so us that know that, us that have a revelation of that, if you don't, that, that word was for you. If you and, and that's fine, it's fine. It's, it's a continual revelation that you can know him as Lord, but do you know him as Father? Are you still hanging on to that external force? Saying, God, take me with you. Take me with you. Take me with you. And he's like, I'm in you. Because the minute you get to the stage, and that's how you kind of, how can I say, you, I don't want to say mature because that sounds a bit condescending, but mature is the word, to be honest. As you mature in the faith and you realize that the Father is actually in you, you want to be like and become like the Father. His desires become your desires. You, the, the things of culture, let me give you another culture thing to throw out to you, marriage. I see women of God, people who say that the Holy Spirit is in them, put their whole identity on finding a spouse. It's like they are completely incomplete. They've taken he that finds a wife to some next level. Because they feel like, gosh, I have not been found. Their status and their identity, I'm all for having a desire to, to be with But not like, gosh, it's, so who you are is rested upon if somebody finds you. You have been found by Jesus. Yeah. You have been found by Jesus. Another thing in culture. And, and so, so, so what happens with counterculture? We take the identity of, actually, I do have a desire to be married, but I'm not going to run to every Christian co conference, which, to be honest, is a women's conference anyway, because it's about two men. <laughs> and, and then go to... Come on, guys. You know I'm real. And then, you know, position yourself, sing louder, my Jesus, my Savior, so you look like the Proverbs 31 woman, that you might be found. And then when you are married, and then can I talk to the church as well? We need to stop elevating marriage to the point that it takes us out of who we are with Christ. Because we're all son and daughters of God, married, unmarried, able to have children, not able to have children. We are all, and the minute culture sees that, they will respond in turn. When you see a confident woman, it's like, okay, you have a desire to be married, but why hasn't this broken you? Well, because it's not actually who I am. Singleness is not my sing only identity. In fact, I, you, it's, it's just my, it's a season of who I am. Or maybe it's, it's what you will be forever. Who knows? Either way, if you're like, no, nah, God forbid, that's not for me. Um, <laughs> you know, either way, cult culture wants to see how we live. Yeah. There's a video, I don't know if it's going to work, um, as we move to part B. And part B is taken from Acts. The minute you become, that's where I am now. If I'm honest, it's, God, what's your desire? What's your desire? Because you're in me. What's your desire? He went from being demon-possessed to the first missionary of a whole Gentile area. Someone that was cutting himself. He's got scars all up his arms. To actually speaking of the compassion. The Bible said, you read it. They marveled 
at what God had done. How, is, how does that happen? Let me tell you what happens. He then, Jesus, he acknowledges that although the physical Jesus has gone, now the spiritual Jesus, the Holy Spirit, who bears witness to truth, I go now, but I leave you a comforter, is in him, and his desires become that of the kingdom desire. Jesus said something, and when he said, teach you how to pray, and he taught us how to pray, he said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All of that is worship. What was his first request? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You can't tell me that you have claimed, that you have been brought out, that you used to come from that, and that's not your desire. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Oh my gosh, you redeemed me. You're still redeeming me daily. You're still telling me who I am. Every time I put my hand, my head down in shame, you say you're the lifter up of my head. And then I come to church and I leave and go home. Nah, I will call you out. I will call you out because I will say, are you really serving at the feet of Jesus? Because how can you walk with Jesus so much and nothing in your heart has changed that, that your desires become his desires? How is it that conferences, we can pack out conferences, but our policy doesn't change? How is it that we can say, you know, I'm, I, I don't have an abortion, but we, we just, we shun the single mothers who's just struggling. How is that possible? When you know what you still struggle with, and he resides in you. So, um, I don't know, does it work? Does the, the picture, is the picture first? Let's do the picture first. Can I have the picture, if that's okay? Um, it's all right if there's no sound. So this is a picture of um, my husband. He sits there. I reject lust in Jesus' name. Um, and my son, who's, who was, I mean, days old. I don't even know, maybe possibly weeks. And God gave me this picture of a father because one of the biggest problems with this, this world is the orphan spirit. It's that we don't know how to have a father. We don't know how to have a father. And we don't know how to submit our lives to an authority. A lot of people love the love of God. The concept of the love of God is great. Come on. It's real. It's not even more than, but it's, it's, it can be preached. You know, I've been doing this for a little while. And, the, you know, Jesus loves you can be preached. Make him Lord of your life is a little bit harder for some people to receive. The counterculture to that in this house has to be that God is sovereign over our lives and God is sovereign over this church. God is sovereign over this place. But if you don't have a relationship with a father, so as you know, Akin's a worshiper, he's a, he's a musician. We put the picture, and the, from when he was a child, when Joshua was a child, he would play worship, play whatever, you know, and put Joshua's hand on his hand to play. To play. This is what happens in culture. You know when we love well? You know when we forgive well? People outside begin to look like, oh. You know what they do? We're sometimes putting their hands on our hands, which is resting on Jesus, and we're teaching them how to live. We're teaching them, it's fine, you can love again. It's fine, you can forgive. It's fine, you don't have to gossip. When you stop a conversation, you're like, actually, this isn't godly. You're not even being dramatic. You're not like... <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're just stopping, like, actually, this isn't, this isn't no longer a godly conversation. I know you're not a Christian. I, I appreciate that you're not a Christian. But I, I am, so I just don't feel comfortable with this. You know what? Their hands are on your hands, which are resting on Jesus, and they're playing. They're, this is how you see. Now, can you put the next video? And something happened last week, and I was like, what is going on here? The vid if you um, bring the video out, as they do, um, I think it's just funny that the world looks at us. And, I'm, and as, as I read scripture, you'll see even more. And there's just four points, and then I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm done. But um, have you got the, have you got it? It's there, they'll get it. But as, while they're getting that, I think we, sh we should think about, Joshua okay, great. Holiday. So it, I don't know if you can see that. Right, so Joshua, that's his little keyboard. Well, we got him. He does it himself now. But something happened last week. Joshua and he kept getting my, my pictures from the mantle and putting it there and Joshua pressing it. Holiday. And I was like, what 
what is this child doing? And to our clock, he's seen his daddy use the pedal. And he's used, he needs, I, Akin has Just never shown him how to use a pedal. Well, he's looking at the pedal. I don't even, so I've been looking at him for years and I've never seen him use a pedal before. But when you, when you teach, it started with just, I'm going to love like this. I'm not imposing that on you. We've got enough preachers. I'm going to love, this is how I love. I'm going to stop this conversation because it's gossip. Actually, I'm, actually, do you know what? I know you've, you're feeling me. I mean, even me too, I'm feeling you. But I don't have sex before marriage. You know, let's just, before you know it, they start doing it themselves. They start looking for the pedals. They start watching how you live down to the detail. And then culture changes. Culture changes. Culture sometimes doesn't change with big conferences. Culture changes when you say, I used to be demon possessed and how I live my life now. That one individual, that one person at work, how you interact with that one person at work that is annoying you, that's how you change culture. When you're on the way to church and you're coming here and you see someone and they're looking at you, they're even giving you side eye and you say, do you want to come with me? At this point, they don't, have, they don't know how to do it. Look at that tiny little hand. You don't, we don't expect them to get pedals. They can just rest on your hand because you're resting on Jesus. Come to, come to the service. You don't have to, no one's going to judge you. They're just playing with you, playing with you. Until one day, they look for something that looks like a pedal. And they do it. Because everyone looks. That's us. And when I look, that's a gosh, he's looking at his father. Am I looking at mine? Am I looking at mine? Am I watching the way he does things so that I can do it? Because I know that I was once, and now I am, how I am, but for the grace of Jesus. Am I changing it? Last few things, because time is gone. But I really want us to read Acts chapter 3. You know, with Acts chapter 3, the reason I'm always fascinated with Acts chapter 3 is because, I mean, we, we see the, the man went, the man in Mark that we just read in chapter 5, he went and we said that people marveled, but we didn't see the intricacies of what that looked like. But with the book of Acts, we're able to see how the disciples did it without a physical Jesus present. We were able to see how Jesus, how Jesus actually worked through the lives of people. Because that's the example of how we can do it in this house. And um, Acts chapter 3, the reason it's particularly fascinating for me, is because it's the, it's, if you like, for me, it's their first outreach mission. There's just a few things. I'm just going to read just a little bit of it, if you don't mind. Um, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour, to, at the hour of, the pra- of the prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man was lame from his mother's womb. Certain man was lame from his mother's womb. That's very similar to the man that we just heard about, right? That's very similar to me. Issues that we've had for generations. No, no, no. Yeah. It's very... And it says that they were... Ca- and they carried him and laid him daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for arms for those who entered the temple. Who seeing Peter and John, now who once was, now are saved, Jesus Christ is in them, left him, Peter and John, and asked them for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave him the, his attention, expecting to receive something. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do give you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he took him with the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle received strength. I'll, I'll leave it there. Everyone's like, where's the, where's the miracles today? That's what one of my one of Christian friends said that to me. I don't see any miracles, though, Toby. That's exactly how he speaks. And I was like, really? Well, are we, aren't we supposed to be the people doing the miracles? Aren't we supposed to be? And there's just a few things that Peter did that I thought was beautiful. Firstly, he said that the, they carried him. The people carried him. He, he, they carried him to a gate. But because of Jewish culture, they were, he was, because he was with issues, he was not allowed to to enter he could never enter the temple anyone that had any sort of i don't know some sort of disability could not physically enter the temple and so the the people always carried them to the outside of the temple that's what culture does they will carry you i mean don't get me wrong i'll say some one of my friends was talking about sex before marriage i said yeah sex is good you know it will carry you for a little bit it will never give you access 
Yeah, bank scams will give you some money for a bit. It will never give you access. Gossip. You, you, the, you know, the tea that get, you get, you drink, you, the tea gets spilt and there's receipts. Yeah? It will be good for a little bit. Never give you access. People will happily carry you. This is the culture. This is the culture of the world. Will happily carry you to the outside while they bop with swag in to gates. What is the culture of TRC? Where will we drop them? No, be honest. And it doesn't even have to be in just this house. You come to this house so I can say, I actually fellowship with you Sunday after Sunday. Now I ask you from my heart to yours, what's your culture? Do you carry people and say, you're happy? Oh, how was sex last night? And you're engaging with that? And you, in nowhere in your heart, it's like, gosh, holiness is before God. Righteousness is that, you know, be holy as I am holy. You're better than that love. You're better than that guy. You're going to win just in and gossip him with them. What's the culture of the house? They carried him to the temple, but he could not gain access. When Simon Peter came, they looked at Simon Peter. He said, it's so funny. He says, and who seeing Peter asked him for arms. When he asked him for arms, but then it says, in verse, it says, but fixing his eyes with John, Peter said, look at us. I said, that's interesting. So he asked for arms, but Peter said, look at us, which means he must have asked down. Jesus is in us. Jesus is not, he's not he, he didn't say, hold on to Jesus. Jesus, come, what should I do now? You know, that's the church. Jesus, what should I come to? It was in him. It flowed from him. He said, look us, look at us. You know what I say? Look at us. Let them look at the way you live. What will they see? Look at, look, let me look at the way you speak. What will they see? Let them look at the, people say to me, Toby, you, there's something about you. I carry God unapologetically. I, I, I'm trying, I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to live a life of holiness because he said, be holy as I am holy. The Bible says that when the enemy sends a flood, that God raises a standard. I say, God, play me, God. Put me on the court, God. Use me, God. I want to be used by you. Is that the desire of your heart? I want to be used by God. I want to say, look at us. I'm not perfect. When I want to go back to Akin and be like... I just walk out. Why? Because I want someone to say, is that marriage? Is that a godly marriage? Is that a godly marriage? Oh, is that patience? Oh, is that forgiveness? Because why are you forgiving them? Don't be a mug. Just, don't, no, it's true. Don't be a mug. Don't be a mug. Come on. Come on now. Oh, first time you did it. If it was second time you did it. Some aunties would be like, I don't believe you've tried. You know, one of my aunties prayed a prayer famously in our family. Well, the prayer was, um, God... God, uh, uh, I, you told me to forgive them. I tried. You told me I should forgive them. I tried. They're still doing it. Now they must die. <laughs> and we were just like, <laughs> die, God. Make them die. You know, it's, it's all of those things that we, as culture, we claim and we say, right? But well, <laughs> it's famous. But when Jesus said, look at us, I mean, when Peter said, look at us, when he said, look at us, he said, silver and gold I don't have. I'm single, but I, it's not who I am. I'm not going to put that, 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 that um, thing on me. I don't have a job. My bank account is in, but I have the peace of God. Silver and gold, all creation earnestly waits to see the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. You think it's money they're waiting for us? No. The, the, the world has money. So if the church is releasing money, it's not it's, what's, so? Is it fame? Famous preachers and famous so-and-so? Have you heard of Michael Jackson, Beyonce? They've got fame. Silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have is Jesus. That's the way I live. That's, not, that's, that's why I live like this. That's why I'm able to lay my head at night, even though I'm a little bit worried. I can say, oh gosh, I rest in Jesus. He looks after the lilies and the valleys. Surely he's considering me. Where does your peace come from when I know you've gone through all of this? It comes from Jesus. Let me tell you about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's the name. Silver and gold. Anything else will not give him access. Anything else will not have given him access to that temple. The only thing that was able to give him access is Jesus. And it's supposed to flow from you. That's culture. That's when his kingdom comes. That's how it works. That's how it works. After, but, but he didn't just say Jesus in the name. He said, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. After he looked at them. You know, some of us, we're saying Jesus. And then as we walk away, we're kissing our teeth. 
So they're like, what? That doesn't make any sense. I don't want that. They're seeing in the church how you, how you have cliques in this house. So when someone else comes in, they don't feel vulnerable to speak. They don't feel vulnerable to share their lives. You know, we, they, they come into the house and we act like we forgot that we just been saved. Because everyone's trying to rush out. How are you? Great. Yeah, good, good. Okay, good, babe. Good, babe. I call you, babe. Yeah, yeah great, babe. You ain't calling nobody. Because you don't care. You don't care enough. You haven't adopted the Father's heart that thy kingdom come. Look at us. Look at the way I live. Lift up your head, baby girl. Lift up your head. I know you're going through something right now. I know it isn't right. I know it hurts. But lift up your head. Because you know, let me tell you, I used to be through that. I went through something similar. You know, I have a friend, not one baby, not two babies, three babies, all gone. What do you say to someone like that other than, you know what, let's look up our eyes to the hills that come of our help. I don't know anything else. You know, I don't have anything else that I could give you today other than Jesus. I, I can't tell you that you will get married. I can't, I can't even say to her that she'll have a child. I can't. But I can tell you that Jesus saves he saves, he saves, he saves, he saves, he saves, he saves. He is the father to the fatherless. He is the father to the fatherless. It doesn't matter what you've come in here with today. It doesn't matter what you've come in here with today. He is able to restore. But once you even get a drop of his restoration, will you share it? It should be bursting at the seams of this house. The whole of Stratford Westfield must be walking as they go into H&M and thinking, gosh, I feel something different. What is it? And it's because we've said, look at us. Sisterhood friendships. People that have made mistakes or think, and they're not feeling condemnation, but they're saying, come, I love you anyway. I love you anyway. We should be able to come into this house. We should be commanding people to live lives of holiness. I don't hear that preached anymore. Can we live lives as holiness? Because, um, you know, it's not easy discipline. Working out of a place of discomfort. Not when everything just feels good. You know, when you say thy kingdom come, it doesn't just mean that you come and it's like, great, everything's ready. It might mean scrubbing the floors. It might mean laying the tech chairs. It might mean stopping to speak with someone when you've got a meeting. All of those things. But you know what you do? It, you do it at the Father's heart. The last thing he did is he lifted him up physically lifting him up because it isn't just what we say it's what we do with his right hand he lifted him up he lifted him up the bible says in isaiah 61 everyone wants anointing everyone wants anointing anointing is something that you know oh god give it to me give it to me give it to me lord i want to be anointed i want to be anointed but you know what? It comes from the Father's heart. You know, he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has healed, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty of captives, to open, the, to, and the opening of the prison doors. It's so funny because that's Isaiah, right? That's Isaiah. That's what, that's what God said through the prophet of Isaiah. But he also said it again in Matthew. He said, when I was, when, in Matthew 23, he said, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. You were too busy singing, my Jesus, my saviour. When I was in prison, you didn't visit me. When I was in hospital, you were too busy, you were booked. You didn't, but you know what that means? You didn't have my heart. I saved you and you enjoyed your salvation. You enjoyed the restoration and you couldn't care less about anyone else. I don't know about you, but I can't roll with people like that. Because we have to get on our knees and care. We've got to care. Because you know what? Our heart posture has to be for the king. God, put me on the court, God. Use me, God. Use me. You know, Peter, this is one last thing and I'm, that's it. You can rise, in fact. We're going to do just, uh, there's two prayer points.
Peter again. It's so funny. But this is Peter while he was still rolling with Jesus. Jesus was present. This is before he got the boldness that hopefully we will have, that we will ask for. You can ask for it. Do you know what I mean? You can say, God, give me that desire that she speaks of. You can say, God, you know, let me understand what it's like to know, to really know you. I don't quite know you yet. Maybe that's why I don't, I don't have that. But that's fine. You can know him today. And, and, and Peter, Peter was rolling with Jesus. And, and this, I'm just going to read it because I just think it's, I've always loved this. I said, God, let this be me. He says, Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 to 15. It says, now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, yeah, he saw his wife's mother, his mother-in-law, lying sick with a fever. So he touched her and the fever left and she arose and served him. And I, I, this passage is so dear to my heart. I've hidden it in the depth of my heart. Because I'm like, gosh. So just because Peter was rolling with Jesus, just because Peter was, just because Jesus was with Peter, Jesus visited his house. How many people have unsaved family members? Has Jesus visited your house because you know him? And then he walked in, and as Jesus does, not even a big dramatic, I mean, it's two verses. This isn't a chapter. Do you know what I mean? Nothing big was, was given it, but Jesus walked past her. Was, she was sick, so she's touched her. You, can you imagine? They're just in the sofa. They're all just chilling. Oh, my friends come to, my friends come in, mother-in-law, mummy, my friends come in. She happens to be the king of kings, <laughs> you know. He comes in. Oh, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? You know, Nigeria, oh, how are you feeling, ma? So respectful. Oh, I'm tired. I feel, just touched, touched him. And so she got up and served him. How many houses will Jesus visit? Because you know, you know him. And how many people will he then touch? And then how many people will then rise up and serve him? Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. That's how it works. And it doesn't mean you have to be on the pulpit. People are not going to come here because of me. I can tell you that. Do you know what I mean? They're going to come here because of, they said, you said, look at us. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Silver and gold I don't have. But in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. I lift you up in the name of Jesus. And then they go and do it. And then they go on and do it. And then his kingdom comes. Amen. <laughs>